This is probably the most excited I've ever been to eat one of these. This is not TV magic, y'all. It's so good. Hi, I'm Ayo. As many of you know, I'm a private chef, so usually I have all the monies. But today, Tasty has given me a new challenge to create a three course brunch for six people for $25. I think Katie hates me. $25 is insane, but you know what? It's Black History Month, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go Southern, get into my roots, so there are gonna be some country sayings, there's gonna be a little AAVE, so let's get started. For my first course, I chose deviled eggs. These are nacho grandma's deviled eggs. They're gonna be a little spicy, I'm gonna use some hot sauce, so let's get into it. The best way to get your shell really good and easy to peel is give it a nice little soft roll. You don't wanna break it up too much, and then it just comes apart. For me, deviled eggs are the southern hors d'oeuvre. You know, this is what you pass around while you wait eight hours for your grandmother to finally finish cooking. All right, so we are ready to go. So I'm just gonna split these guys now. Old school way, you cut them cross this way to make them all long and all that. Like I said, we're gonna fancy them up just a little bit. So I'm actually gonna cut them this way. You actually wanna just trim a little bit off that guy and they stand up. And then I'm gonna just take my yolks out because that is how you make your filling. The other good thing about having deviled eggs as like your appetizer is you can make these things a day ahead, two days ahead. It's something you can refrigerate so it's not like it needs to be like super fresh. So I have three tablespoons of mayo, one tablespoon of Dijon. I told y'all they were gonna be spicy. So I also have a tablespoon of hot sauce. What kind of hot sauce you like is really personal to you being from the South. So you will notice that I am using crystal hot sauce. And I'm also gonna salt to taste, but about a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna use a fork and mash all of this together until it gets pretty smooth. You don't want chunks of egg yolk and all that good stuff. We're actually gonna transfer these to a piping bag with a nice star tip, just to give them some grooves, some divots, make them look a little interesting. You just give them a little swirl. You wanna fill them up just over the tip. The next thing we're gonna do is really zhuzh them up with our garnishes. So these are my scallions. So we're actually gonna turn our knife on a bias and cut them super thin. So you get like long little strips, long little pieces. And they're so cute. They make like these little boomerangs. So now I'm gonna garnish our deviled eggs. The paprika shakers usually have like these really big holes. So I'm actually gonna open it and just put a little bit in my hand and we're gonna give them a little sprinkle. And you don't want to go too heavy. You don't want a mouthful of paprika, but you do want enough to give you a pop of color and really enhance that eggy flavor. And obviously I already had this in the pantry, so it's totally optional if you don't want to use the paprika, but one is a deviled egg staple, and two, it looks pretty, right? Southern cooking is about love, right? That's what everyone says. They're like, ooh, Southern hospitality, you feel the love. So let me just give them a little love scallion. You just put a couple, one or two on each one. Look how cute they are, you guys. And these things, 90 cents a serving. Course one, done. All right, let's move on to course number two. For my entree, I am making pimento cheese quiche. Hold for reaction. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I've never made pimento cheese quiche, but doesn't it just sound good? And I think it'll pair well together. I ate pimento cheese entirely too much growing up. So I'm really excited to give it a shot and see if I can make this work. So I have two pre-prepared pie crusts. So what I'm gonna do is actually roll these guys out onto my lightly floured surface. And once you get them all flattened on your surface, just give them a little roll out. We're gonna make them a little thinner. And we want them to cover our entire tart shell. And I'm actually gonna gently lay the girls in this pan. Just push down on the sides so we get a nice tight fit. They're gonna overlap, but that's fine. I'm gonna press them together. Quiche is not a super Southern thing, but it is one of the first things I really got into when I went to culinary school, because culinary school, you know, like French. And pimento cheese is what I grew up eating. So I'm really excited about this dish. It feels like where I should be right now. A really neat trick to trim away these edges really fast is you take your massive rolling pin and you just wanna roll it over the top. Okay, this looks good. I'm just gonna peel away. It's almost like taking off a face mask, except less gross. So I have my girls in the tart pan, so I'm about to add my eggs to the bowl, and I'm gonna add half and half. I'm gonna use half and half because we're broke and we can't afford heavy cream. This is Southern, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of crystal and just a little salt because everything needs to be seasoned. And I'm just gonna give this a whisk. Make sure I get all those yolks all broken up. 
pimento cheese is basically some kind of shredded cheese. It's typically cheddar, and you add little pimentos, and typically it has like mayonnaise and garlic, and it's like a dip. But since we're making a quiche, we're gonna take those same ingredients and add them to our egg mixture. So I added my four ounces of pimento. I'm gonna add my cheese and half of the scallions. Mix the girls up, and then I'm going to very gently, lovingly, carefully add this to my tart pan. Make sure we get our cheese in there. So this is our bougie pimento cheese, but I used to eat this growing up. A little kid sitting on the floor with her ball of mayonnaise, cheese, pimentos, and crackers, which is probably why most of us have health problems because this is a snack. <laughs> so to finish off our beautiful pimento cheese quiche, I'm gonna add about a half cup cherry tomatoes and I'm gonna put them cut side up. This way when we bake it, you can see them, you get that beautiful pop of red. And finally, I'm gonna take the rest of my scallions and just put them across the top. So the last step is to put it in the oven at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes, and you have to let it rest for 30 minutes. We wanna let it set and let that custardy texture really get all good and creamy. One of my sides is gonna be candied bacon. The only thing Southern about this is if you know one thing about folks from the South, we will have some polk on our folk, okay? So I'm gonna spray these, because we're gonna put these in the oven, and the sugar's gonna get all caramelized and yummy. And we wanna use as much bacon as possible and make sure everybody gets about two pieces. I'm also not gonna use all of my bacon because we're gonna use it as a topping in our next dish. This dish is not about being healthy. It's called dollar dish, not healthy dish. So I actually have 2 thirds cup brown sugar, and I'm just gonna give them all a liberal sprinkle across the top. This whole thing is all about stretching each ingredient till its last drop. So I'm actually just gonna add a little bit of pepper on top of my candy bacon. Quick and easy, the bacon is done. We're gonna put these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 22 to 24 minutes. We need to balance out this meal. We have a lot of heavy things, so I'm thinking what is cheaper than a salad? And since we're going Southern, I am going to make a wedge salad. To save money, we're gonna make our dressing ourselves. So in my bowl, I am going to add a cup of mayonnaise and I'm gonna add a cup of that half and half. And before I add my ranch to it, I'm actually just gonna give this a whisk. So I'm just gonna add the seasoning from my seasoning packet and that's it. Super easy, super cheap, super simple. So the next step is obviously to cut our lettuce into wedges. I really like Iceberg. You know, she's not one of the sexier girls. She's not kale or spinach or even romaine. I don't care about that. In the South, it is 200 degrees in the summer at two o'clock. I want something with a high water content. So I'm going with Iceberg. So to make sure I get six pieces, I cut them in half and then I cut them into thirds. And we're just gonna put it cut side up. You wanna get that really pretty yellow color in there. You also wanna get the ridges facing up so that way your dressing gets into it, some of your toppings get into it. And you just wanna get a nice clean topping. Ugh, it just falls over the sides. Like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. So I have some nice crispy bacon, the same bacon from earlier. One, to save money, and two, Southern. Even our salads have pork. And then I'm gonna add my cherry tomatoes, the same cherry tomatoes from our pimento quiche. So last but not least, we're gonna add more scallions. Why? Because we have scallions. And I feel like a salad just isn't a salad without a little bit of onion. Use whatever you got, but definitely some onion. You want the salad to have some bite. Oh my God, so the first time, I remember having a wedge salad. My family would go to this restaurant called Crystal River and they would serve wedge salads, but they wouldn't have any dressing because the dressing were in these super tall green bottles full of ranch on the table. You would pull, you would pull the cork out and then we would just cover the salad in ranch and have our soup. It was perfect. So we are completely finished with our main course, our pimento cheese quiche, our candy bacon, and our wedge salads all came out to 218 per serving. Ooh, I'm getting good at this. And if we're gonna be Southern, then we need a dessert. For dessert, I am gonna make a peanut butter pie. I am obsessed with these, so be prepared to have your mind legit blown. If you are a peanut butter lover, this is the coup de gras. This is dessert. First thing I'm gonna do is add a cup of powdered sugar to my cup of peanut butter and whip it all together. Peanut butter pie is just really, really easy. I don't wanna say it's so easy like anybody could do it, but honestly, y'all, it is that easy. This is something you can have your kids make. If you really like peanut butter, honestly, you could probably just pour the peanut butter in the pie crust and eat that, and I might. I actually only ever had peanut butter pie when we would go to the, that restaurant. That's somewhere we would go, I mean, oh my God, whenever someone graduated, 
from preschool or literally any excuse to go to Crystal River and get that big ranch and that peanut butter pie, we were down for it. You know, it was like, that's like going out when you're in the South. You go to a restaurant where you can get seafood and large portions, feed a family for not that much money. I have my powdered sugar and peanut butter concoction and then I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. And then while this is going, I'm going to slowly stream in my half and half. You don't want to do it too fast because you will break it. And since you're not going to bake this, you want to make sure you get the consistency just right in the beginning. That half and half is $1.98, which sounds like nothing until you're doing dollar dish. So that's a really expensive item. And I've used it in my pimento quiche and my ranch dressing. And now the peanut butter pie. So we absolutely stretched that thing as far as we could. So I'm going to scrape the sides of my bowl and just make sure I have everything really well incorporated. And then I'm going to fold in my whipped cream. We don't want to deflate it because you want it to still have that light, airy texture. And that's why we fold it in versus mixing it in. All right, I don't want to do too much and deflate the girls. So now I'm just going to add this to my chocolate cookie crust, which is definitely a very, very important part. You can do it in a graham cracker crust, but you don't get the same feeling. And then I'm just going to use my little offset spatula just to smooth it down some more because it's a no-bake dessert, right? There won't be a whole lot of change in this once you lay it down. All right, so she's flat, mama looks good. So I'm gonna chill this in the refrigerator for about one to two hours and just let it set. So in this piping bag, I have some chocolate and I'm just gonna create some cute little lines over the top. So on top of our chocolate for our peanut butter pie, what's better than more peanut butter, right? You know, honestly, I haven't made a peanut butter pie in I don't know how long, but I might add it back into the rotation, you know? And finally, to dress up our girl, we're just gonna add a little bit of whipped cream. And we're done. I'm really excited to eat this one. Like, I'm about to cheat on my diet. I'm not sorry about it. This pie is gonna be 102 per serving. So here are all three courses of our Southern inspired brunch. Today I made spicy deviled eggs, wedge salads, pimento quiche, candied bacon, and peanut butter pie. We need a new challenge, y'all. Like, I've just gotten way too good at this. So I'm gonna have one of my spicy deviled eggs. Oh my God, it's so good. It's time to get some of this quiche. It's kind of big piece. I'm not ashamed of this. <laughs> that was a great idea. You guys, I deserve this. Mm. It's perfect. Oh my goodness. I'm showing a lot of restraint here. <laughs> All of this has been super delicious. Thank you guys for watching. I'm so happy I got to elevate and share a little bit of my culture with you guys during Black History Month. If you're from the South, you already know this is kind of how we get down. So please tag me if you make any of this. If you make a pie, feel free to send me one. I will see you guys next time. Bye. It's so good. Oh, yes. <laughs>